Hi. Hi. Can everyone hear me behind? Hi. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being out here. My name is CJ Jamuda. Um, currently, I wear so many different hats. Um, we're hybrid data, hybrid data solutions. We're a little startup out of Los Angeles, California. I'm here to talk to you guys about um, evaluating to see whether could edge computing lead to the end of real-time operating centers. So for us at Hybrid Data, the way we, I mean, we're so deep into technology, but however, before we ever move into any technology, we always want to know, like, previously, I mean, before the technology, are there, like, you know, extra business values that will derive from, <coughs> excuse me, are there, like, extra business values will derive from a new technology? So this is just, like, a snapshot to show you uh, before edge computing, what was actually, you know, the previous procedures. So say you have like, you know, your bunch of your um, different sensors, your MWD sensors, you stream the data via, you know, like an EDR. An EDR could typically mean the device gateway I had here. I'm just trying to make it a, a lot more lower level. So it could be your device gateway. From your device gateway, your piping, you have like a, what they call a WITS, or with SML client that is publishing all the data from your EDR device to, to the cloud. And back at the cloud, it could be, your cloud could be in your office if you have your cloud infrastructure on-premise. So back at the office, you have your team of your geoscientists, your team of your drilling engineers, your team of your reservoir engineers that um, almost pretty much updating the model. So we put it, we just put all of them in the perspective that it's more or less adding more intelligence to your eventual model. Um, the control commands just signify that the, um, the drilling engineer is now talking to the people at the rig floor for them to, you know, take certain actions which leads to actuations. So what this does is, the challenge about before edge computing is just that increased network communication costs. The time it takes to transmit information and, I mean, send back information to the rig, to the rig floor, it's so expensive. That leads to, you know, if you want to act immediately, say, even if it's a safety event, it's a lot more challenging to act. Um, additionally, too, in, in, based on that, you are, I mean, not going to be able to respond to, you know, certain um, responses setting events at the rig floor. So now, why, why edge computing? So the, one of the very important things about edge computing, um, like the previous speaker spoke about, so with edge computing, you've done, you know, your, obviously you've built all your, you, I mean, you've built your well planning model. Um, the speaker too previously spoke about You've already de decided what your completion intervals are, or your what your targets are. Um, but now is you want to deploy because once you deploy the intelligence you've already gathered from analyzing that data on the edge. On the edge, I mean, like right on your rig site, you can be able to quickly, I mean, benefit from drilling optimization. And like also one of the speaker talked about you know, geostering, with geostering, you can be able to navigate and actuate much more faster. So in essence, is taking that intelligence that you have on the cloud, bringing it closer to, I mean, to the rig floor. Because um, the challenge again is that sometimes, you know, the network could be like, you know, not so great. I mean, the network could be a little bit sketchy for, for your, for whatever response or request you're making from your cloud server or your on-prem server for them to respond faster. So we talked about, you know, this beautiful edge computing, but how can you, this actually be realized? So the snapshot we have is just giving you an example or, I mean, just a typical example. We don't have beautiful slides like previous prevent, presenters, but we kind of, the, the, the way I put up the slide is, okay, you have your well planning already. Um, you've determined what your well spacing is. 
your reservoir engineers and your geosciences and your petrophysicists, they've already, you know, um, ascertained what the rock and fluid properties of those worlds are likely going to be. Um, they define their formation tops, they map what their world trajectory is in combination, the geologists and the drilling engineers and the cloud. Besides that, you also have the agents on the rig floor. So the agents, I mean the pumps, the motors, I'm just trying to bulk everything, the majority of the pumps, the motors, it could be your mud pump, your motors could be from your top drive, from your draw works, um, and the tanks here are both storage tanks and compressors, if, I mean, if you're injecting cement. So basically it's now that you already have your intelligence, your well plan, planning, you push it to the rig floor, which is on the edge, which is the train, um, train artificial intelligence or machine learning model. Now, what that does for you is you can now quickly actuate, respond to certain um, different amount of, of events locally on the rig floor there. But additionally, the great thing about it is, you know, some certain QCs that you do at your real-time operation center, you can actually do those QCs locally on your edge computing device. Um, and by so doing, uh, like one of the presenter talked about earlier today, um, the iShell TM manager, he talked about deploying an edge computing to literally, I think like pumping off water or pumping on water. So those kind of events, they've not been like um, any, how would I put any anomaly in the events. So they literally don't have to like push that excess data coming from the sensors to the cloud. It's only more than likely when there's an anomaly. So those are the kind of you know, benefits you get from doing those local data processing you know, and saving on the edge device. So once you have all that, it's even a lot more easier for your geo-serving, your MW devices to quickly act on it, your drilling optimization for you to you know, optimize both your um, the vibrations, just you know, name it. So beyond that, now, transmitting the data back to the surface. So several different ways you could transmit it with your mud pulse telemetry, EMT, or your wire drill pipe. So once you transmit the data back, the edge, you're just already at the edge. Your edge local hardware consumes it, actuates immediately. I mean, sends down control commands to optimize your processes for you. Well, with every good thing, there are potential challenges to so some of the potential challenges in using the edge framework is one is your, your device constraint. So your compute and your storage. So depending on what you're processing, if you're just processing your gamma ray logs, your MWD um, data logs, I mean your magnetometers, accelerometers, and gyroscope data, yeah, probably you can use like, you know, a commodity, uh, I mean, you can use, you know, a lower grade of, I mean, hardware. But another thing, again, is depending on the model, too, you're integrating, I mean, you're deploying as intelligence on the local device. Depending on your strategy, I mean, how you want to infer the model. If it's so large, you might want to apply some other, uh, I mean, different techniques. Um, I mean, beam model quantization, but obviously you're now not striking a right balance between accuracy and um, speed of, of your algorithms. Another thing is once you introduce that um, edge computing layer on the rig floor, you're exposing um, your devices to, you know, more, I mean, they're more security prone. And you have like all these devices streaming data. So it gives you a lot of challenges in terms of like managing these devices. And depending on what edge solution you decide to go with, you could actually go with a cloud vendor, which might lead to you, I mean, I mean, being locked down to a cloud vendor. But again, there are open source tools that you can deploy those edge computing. So depending on, you know, what your strategies are, you can, you know, um, execute that. So finally, is it the end of real-time operating system? I'll say it depends. Um, currently in the industry, what I've noticed is that some companies, what they call real-time operating system, for me, in my opinion, it's not real-time operating system. Why there are some companies here that do, you know, actual real-time operating systems. So for companies that I think that don't do real-time operating systems, I feel like for you to take the, I mean, the most advantage from, you know, real-time operating system, I mean, 
for companies like that, it's likely going to be an end for real-time operating system for you because um, you want to re reduce, I mean, because with current edge computing infrastructure, you can reduce the compute workload that you normally use either on-prem or your or in the cloud. Then also now companies demand for intelligent and actionable monitoring. and. Um, because of that, you have to, you know, shift the way you, you know, put your terminology for real time. Then finally, you know, in terms of like, I mean, I see the real time operating system, um, real time operating centers. So I have a little bit of experience with self driving cars. So in self driving cars, it's what they call teleoperations. It's just pretty much controlling the self driving car from a distance. So really, I see that real-time operating system should be more or less something that will lead to autonomous drilling, which, I mean, currently, like, you know, a couple of, you know, companies are, are already, like, you know, vested and developing resources on it. And that's all from me. Thank you for a great talk. Uh, I must uh, say that I am a great fan of edge computing per se. Uh, but uh, I kind of maybe it's a question common. Uh, you have talked about challenges. Uh, I'm, I think that uh, this is a kind of one uh, core challenge in this approach. Uh, let's say we have a good solution, good model for uh, automated geostealing, which is, I think, we are not here yet, but I hope that we will be uh, there yet quite soon. Uh, but the question is that uh, if you already on those tracks, you have to, let's say, retrain, you have to adjust, you have to learn and learn your model uh, uh, with each uh, new portion of data. And the, right now the problem with the edge computing is that uh, yeah, you already can do the inference on edge, but uh, they are not uh, suited, they are not uh, uh, built to do uh, training on edge. And uh, another layer of this problem is that even if you have a training on edge, you will be able to train uh, this portion of model only on the data which you get on this specific well. And you will not be accounting for other wells. So in this case, you have a build a kind of, let's say, meta federated uh, learning uh, cloud of edge devices, which is yeah, I, I think that's a quite a great challenge for industry, but I don't think that the industry is anywhere close to that kind of uh, solution. So basically, I think, yeah, it's a good, good approach, but here's the kind of, uh, some, some, some very uh, core complications to that. So what, what do you think about that? Uh, to be honest with you, the, that solution is already there in the market. Maybe probably because you've never had, you know, people in the industry deploying it. So first of all, I'll start with the edge computing framework. I try that as much as possible to condense it. So there's just like a lot of different ways you can do that. So now, in our case, hybrid data, you know, the way we'll deploy, you know, some, such kind of situation is we already have a pipeline in the cloud, which one part would define what they call like topics that push the data for us to the cloud and we should have the intelligence on the local device. What it does is, depending on what the client wants, let's say you want us every, when, you, when we get data points for every, you want it every 10 minutes, retrain this algorithm for me, push it to the edge for me, swap the algorithms, like literally like swap it. So that is already there. And I think that's, uh, that's one. Uh, so that's already there, like that orchestration framework. I mean, being able to like swap those models, retrain the model, depending on how much frequency you want, you can quickly do that. Um, even the, is even beyond the intelligence, even for security. You say you want to deploy, I mean, security updates, if you have like 20 facility all around the globe, you want to deploy all of them in one second. But I think in here in the industry, there's not a lot of talk about how you productionize or execute all this. It's more about that little spot. So edge computing, what you can do in the capabilities is so wide. As a matter of fact, even in terms of like IoT data, 
I heard you talk about like time synchronization issue. That's even the kind of processing you can do locally in your edge that would enrich your data more. Then going back to NWD that you talked about geostering, in terms of geostering algorithms, depending on the algorithms you're using, like the speaker talked about earlier, in my opinion, why they're using a, I mean, a Bayesian approach is in terms of how, I mean, the, the size of the models is a lot more lesser than deploying the recurrent neural networks and all that. So such kind of models could easily fit into a commodity, you know, hardware. I hope, you know, that sheds some light into some of your comments, though. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, okay, thank you. 